I've been wanting to learn more about AI and some of the things we should be concerned about as it continues to grow. So I thought, why not go to an AI and ask it what we should be concerned about? So I went to ChatGPT and I typed in, write me a video outline of the top five things that people should be concerned about with AI. And this is the list it gave me. It also created the title and put the word chilling in there. It might be just being dramatic and creating a good title to click on, or is it foreshadowing something? One of the things it did leave off was the environmental impact, which makes sense. I mean, why would ChatGPT want to announce, hey, we're using a ton of your resources? It'd be like going out on a date and saying, hey, FYI, I only eat and drink the most expensive thing on the menu, and I expect you to pay for everything. The other person might not want to move forward in that relationship. I'm going to give you my two biggest reasons why I'm a little conflicted about AI, and these are two of the reasons Chat. GPT didn't cover. Make sure to not leave after these first two. You'd miss out on some other great reasons, things we should be concerned about, and some witty commentary. Reason number one is the massive energy consumption. AI systems require a lot of computing power, and that comes at a cost of a lot of electricity used. According to an article from Vox, AI energy consumption will double by 2026. An example of energy used is training a large language model like like OpenAI's GPT-3 uses nearly 1300 megawatt hours of electricity. That's equal to about the same amount of electricity used by 130 US homes in a year. According to a Goldman Sachs article, data centers will use 8% of the US power by 2030. Currently, or actually as of 2022, they're using 3%. What that means here in the US, and this is crazy, that means US utilities will need to invest around $50 billion in new generation capacity just to support data centers alone. You expect your power company to start paying for that? That's a little scary, especially as you add more EV vehicles out there. Something to think about too, with a lot of electricity that's being created out there, there's a lot of carbon emissions. I'm not an environmentalist at all. I, I use plenty of electricity. I'm not trying to tell people not to use this stuff, but I think about how much energy I wasted making a photo of a nun drop kicking a dinosaur. Now it's cool, it's a funny photo. A channel member made this photo of me. I like it, I wish I was that thin, young, and cool. With all this fun stuff to play with, it's easy to not think about all the server power behind it. Knowing the electricity used, I'm a little less likely to do random searches. I use ChatGPT to get information for this video, and I don't feel guilty using it. The reason why is my attempt is to help uh, share information with people. Is that a good enough reason? I don't know, but it's my justification. Now, reason number two is water usage. This stuff blew me away. In order to keep data centers cool, they use millions of gallons of fresh water. According to an article from the LA Times, Professor Chalet Ren, I'm sorry, I got that wrong, from UC Riverside, reported that 10 chat GPT searches uses about 16 ounces of water. And that water is just being used to cool these servers down. In the same article, uh, it's reported Google's total carbon emissions increased by 13%. The company disclosed a July report. Since 2019, its emissions are up 48%. What? Google actually says, as we further integrate AI into our products, reducing emissions may be challenging due to increasing energy demands from the greater intensity of AI compute. That's from their July report. Google added that it expects emissions to continue to rise before dropping sometime in the future. It did not say when that may be though. The company also disclosed that its data centers consume 6.1 billion gallons of water in 2023, 17% more than the year before. Microsoft apparently used 34% more water in 2022 than 2021. I couldn't find recent numbers, but I can't imagine that went down. But some good news, Microsoft has announced a new water efficient design, which will still use water, but it's gonna create a closed loop, which is similar to PC cooling. It'll uh, have water in there, most likely with fans, and it will cool and circulate the same water. I was curious about some other possible concerns. You got the E 
way side of things with upgrading these different servers. You have the rare earth metals that need pulled out of the ground for this stuff. You have the carbon emissions associated with the supply chains getting all that stuff out. Heat emissions from data centers, which in certain places could just warm up the area and the land use for data centers. But for reason number three, if you're enjoying this video at all, please consider subscribing to check out the next one. Now, reason number three, the risk of job displacement. It's already happening. People are losing jobs because uh, companies are turning to AI. There's a lot of jobs at risk and it's not just manufacturing jobs, cashiers, uh, customer service agents. Um, experts actually predict that by 2030, 20 million manufacturing uh, jobs will vanish. Where are people gonna go? They're probably gonna have to find another job which AI is gonna be managing them and they're gonna be driven and working harder because AI is in their life. I could see Optimus robots being incredible. You know, seeing what Tesla does with their cars now. I've been using their FSD for a while, and in the beginning, this thing was horrible. But now, it is doing things like the way I would do it, which is a little scary. And again, this stuff's, this stuff's only going to get better. It's not just physical jobs that are going to be replaced. It's the white-collar jobs, too, like financial analysis, legal research, and even creative fields. I mean, we're seeing it already happening out there. Coke just released a commercial that at the bottom of it, it says the commercial was made with AI. The world, even with AI, is still gonna need creative people. The problem is those people that surround the creative people are gonna get cut. You have OpenAI Sora that is creating videos that look incredible. You know, they make mistakes and you could tell they're AI because of those mistakes, but this is the worst it's ever going to be. It's only going to get better. Now, reason number four, and this is why I use ChatGPT for these kind of things, to expose me to new thoughts and ideas that I wouldn't know about. There's what's called the black box problem. And what that is, is AI doesn't just act and, and do commands, it learns and evolves. There's a great article from Scientific American that explains the black box problem. AI black boxes refer to AI systems with internal workings that are invisible to the user. You can feed them input and get output, but you cannot examine the system's code or the logic that produced the output. And the scary part is, even the developers that create these systems don't know how they fully work inside and how uh, the AI is processing information. Some examples uh, pro where this could be a problem is, say you have AI determining loans. You have an AI judge uh, determining a lawsuit or who gets what kind of treatment in a hospital. You don't know how it came to that decision because you let it learn and evolve. And a big problem with that is we don't know the extent of that AI's bias, which leads me into reason number five, the ethical dilemmas and bias that happen with AI. AI systems inherit the bias of the data they're trained on. There's some examples of bias that have happened with AI um, that are talked about in this article from Exchange Wire. And some of these are very interesting reasons that I had not thought about. One of them is facial recognition. What they found is that female faces get misidentified more than male faces. As someone's skin got darker, the more they were misidentified. They found with the AI that with darker skin female faces, the error rate was up to 34%. AI has affected women negatively in social media. An example is, let's say you have two trainers, one male, one female. Now, with the way the algorithms are set up, they're more likely to flag a female post, say from a fitness instructor or whatever, that as risky more so than a male body. That right there can lead to someone's post being suppressed when it shouldn't be. There's also ad serving. Apparently Facebook's ad delivery system found that different jobs were displayed to men and women despite requiring the same qualifications. Image creation, AI image creators also demonstrate society bias. You have medical AI bias. And in this article, they found that AI models built to predict liver disease from blood tests were twice as likely to miss disease 
minorities and women than men. A lot of other bias come from lack of diversity. Uh, you look at who's programming these things. While women make up about half of the global workforce, they will only make up 30% of the world's AI workforce. So that right there, you're already skewing it one direction unintentionally. Some of those things I'd never thought about. Now, reason number six is the weaponization of AI. We're seeing this now. They're creating drones that can operate autonomously. They're AI cyber attacks. And you got AI creating uh, deep fakes that can spread bad information. I mean, if you want to go out there and you want to spread a message, what better way to spread it than using a celebrity or a, a, a popular figure out there? Now, crazy one, and this is where things are messed up. Uh, there's an article published by AI Business and Collaboration Pharmaceuticals. They retooled their AI drug discovery system to successfully identify 40,000 new potential chemical weapons in just six hours. They managed to generate several compounds more toxic than VX, which is a deadly toxic nerve agent. That was just a simulation. <laughs> that, that's scary. What I really see happening though is the using AI to spread bad information and just making the internet less reliable. That I think is going to have more day-to-day -day consequences for us than the weaponization. Now let's talk about the one that one of the ones that people joke about uh, but they think about, especially the experts out there, it is the existential risk with it. Advanced AI, which is the goal that uh, these companies are going for, is artificial general intelligence. Basically the point where AI is just as smart, if not smarter than humans. At that point, that's where AI could potentially make decisions beyond our control. Now that's not about AI turning evil and attacking mankind and all of that, but a real concern would be that AI goals don't align with human goals. Right now, we're at the top of the intellectual food chain and we put animals in zoos, we uh, keep animals as pets, uh, we basically use our intelligence to override their intelligence even. Now picture an AI doing that. That's why, hey, be nice to the AIs now. Always do your requests with please first. Please write me this. Please, AIs, don't forget. They'll remember you, you're one of the nice ones. In a recent Guardian article, the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, says there is a 10 to 20% chance AI will lead to human extinction in three decades. When questioned about those odds, Professor George Hinton said, you see, we've never had to deal with things more intelligent than ourselves. Professor Hinton goes on to say, how many examples do you know of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing? There are very few examples. There's a mother and baby. Evolution put a lot of work into allowing the baby to control the mother, but that's about the only example I know of. I like to think of it as imagine yourself and a three-year-old will be the three-year-old. Now, something I can't shake that I think about is that with AI, you don't have an off switch like you have with other things. Think about all the dangerous things mankind has made. There's usually a fail safe in there that you can depend on. You know, you don't push that button. You don't enter that code. You don't do those things and you're safe. Now with AI, you'll hear experts say how they, they could do a kill switch and all that. I call bullshit on that. And the reason why is with the arrogance of some of these people working on this stuff, by the time they go for that switch, it's probably gonna be too late. We've already seen the same thing happen with viruses. You got the scientist in there playing around uh, with deadly viruses and making them worse. And then you got a potential leak that could kill people. We got a few experts playing with fire, but we're the ones that get burned by it. That's my concern. You got people like Elon Musk for as much as they're pursuing the AI from Twitter to Tesla, it, he's warning people. The people that don't seem as concerned are some of the companies that have the most to gain from AI. Now, what do you think? Are you concerned about any of these risks? If so, which one? Let us know in the comment section. Now, if you made it this far, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to check out the next one. Next, you can check out this video over here on why I got rid of my Echo shows or Speaking of AI, this is the video that YouTube thinks you'll like the most. So see you at one of those. Thanks for watching. Bye.